Like, I mean, I like to overhype it because it's like a US government uh, tool, right? Maybe I will clickbait with like uh, finding vulnerability in US government tool or something like this. Uh, then of course, in the end, in the video, be actually honest about it. So, so maybe I use it for clickbait. A few days ago, I wanted to check out CodeQL because I was working on a project for a client that was a, um, a Node.js application that used Apollo server for a GraphQL endpoint, okay? Details don't matter. Now to work on this, I obviously needed an example. I couldn't use the work example. So I went on, on, on GitHub and I just searched for GitHub for projects that use Apollo server and basically use also like an authorized decorator. And that's when I found this software by chance, which is, is called Red Eye. It's from the US government and it's um, a visual analytics tool for supporting red and blue team operations. So, you know, it was kind of cool that it even like had a security relevance in, in that sense. So we decided to pull this um, GitHub repository and then we also like quickly set up a dev environment to launch it was not that important, but was cool for proof of concept later. And then we started to look into CodeQL and we actually, we came up with a query to ask about this and this led actually to a bug. So uh, let me show you the, 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 the query that we wrote. We are looking at all decorators used by the program. And then we checked, is that decorator basically a mutation or a query? it basically finds like all these queries. So it finds this decorator, but then it has to match a second condition. And the second condition is, so if it's a mutation or a query, then get the parent and then get all the children's of that parent or the decorator children and make sure that none of those children are an authorized decorator. I don't know, there's maybe a nicer way to write this query like this. You know, this was literally the first time using CodeQL. But this is what the query then does. It, it finds all queries, then goes to the parent, basically looking at all of this, and now checking that, looking at all the other decorators on that function and make sure it's not authorized. Because there is a child that is authorized, it would not select this query. But doing that, we actually found um, endpoints, the progress resolver and the operator resolver that had this uh, decorator missing. Then we tested it out and we figured out we can write this GraphQL query to query all global operators without requiring a cookie. So after we found this out and we, we did an example there, there even turns out to be a mutator that we can use. So we can even do like changes. So using the create global operator mutation, we can even create new global operators. Um, <coughs> and that's pretty cool. However, you know, it's not super critical, okay? Like it was even clear in the stream, like I said it, it it's kind of nice. Like it's probably a bug, like it, it's kind of a bug, but it's also pretty lame, right? Like I re we, we found this on stream and I reported it in a public uh, issue because this is not something critical, okay? We don't need to exaggerate the severity of this, okay? This is a lame bug, okay? Like it's, it's lame, it, it's, it's nothing special, um, I couldn't, Maybe, you know, theoretically, you, you, you can come up with a scenario where you are infiltrating a company using that tool and then you can use the API to query all the different uh, like operator names that are using this tool. But then again, like, what are you using it for? Okay, maybe now you have usernames that you can use then in another step for enumeration of brute forcing. I don't know. It, it's really a lame vulnerability. Ne Either way, we reported it because like, you know, it was a nice end to the story of using CodeQL. The reason why I want to mention this, because we got a response. So somebody looked at the issue. And so let's look at uh, what, what the developers responded to our bug report. This is awesome. Thank you for digging into this and writing such a detailed ticket. The query's name is a bit confusing on our part. The global operators query and mutations are only called on the login page. A single password protects the red eye server. We saw this, like it was really confusing. Like there was one password and there was a default login username dev. And I was thinking, okay, like 
at first I got excited and I thought, oh crap, with this mutation, we maybe can add arbitrary users and then we can log in into the page, like an authentication bypass basically. I didn't really understand like what these operator names are even used for. Like it made already sense that it's not something critical. So Red Eye server uses a single password and they use this endpoint to populate the user field with operators from the campaign as a way to match Red Eye users with operators using the tool. They intended this to be public. They decided this to be public because I guess how it's used is there's like one central password and then they kind of want to have like different operators names attached to it, but it's not that important. It's just an internal tool used for the internal team and they can automatically this way add operator names to it uh, by maybe some external tool that's maybe spinning up uh, this this thing automatically or something like this. I don't know. First of all, they want to get all the operators maybe to show it in the login menu so you can select your username that you want to use and then you supply the password, right? To actually use the application, you still need the password. And within that like small team that is using this application, uh, you know, everybody kind of like, like it's a trusted environment. Everybody wants to select like their username that they want to use when they then open this. That, that's kind of like the intention and that's why it was intentionally uh, public. Now they are saying, they add to it, we should rename that to global users instead. Uh, I, I'm not sure, is that not, oh, glo global operators, global users, uh, whatever. I don't know if the name makes a big difference. Is it just a list of usernames to log in with and pre-populate based on campaign data? We could make this, make this secure and still be available for populating the login page. So, you know, it's just a little feature of the application to make maybe the login process, you know, a bit like nicer for the way how this tool is used. And now they think about how they maybe can change it a little bit. I do feel like personally, even now understanding like their context a little bit, I feel like put that mutation behind authorization because, you know, uh, to create operators. I feel like there's a default developer global operator, you know, why don't put that behind authorization so nobody can like fill up your database without authorization and create, you know, the users that you need and then listing um, the global operators, keep that public, whatever. Um, that's kind of how I probably would address, address this. But I think this is also a great lesson uh, just because, you know, we were realistic about this not being like something serious or crazy or critical. We d do not need to, like, I mean, I like to overhype it because it's like a US government uh, tool, right? Maybe I will clickbait with like uh, finding vulnerability in US government tool or something like this. Uh, then of course, in the end, in the video, be actually honest about it. So, so maybe I use it for clickbait, but you know, it's not a serious thing. And then also like talking like the developer inside, even like with a little bit of vulnerability that I kind of thought it might be, now it's kind of even like taken out uh, even a bit more of the severity out of it based on understanding like what it's used for. So um, yeah, I think that, that's a good, um, I, I feel like there's a good lesson there because on Twitter, when people report like bugs to bug bounty programs and they are, and the tickets get rejected. Like I can tell you if this were a bug in a bug bounty program uh, and somebody else found it, they might like start arguing now, but yeah, no, no authentication and a mutation should never be authentication. And they are technically right. But then at the same time, like it's really not a, like a serious bug or something. Like, I don't know what, you shouldn't care so much about it, but then the money incentives come in and you fight over this and um, all that kind of stuff. While in reality, it's just, you know, you know, chill, it's nothing bad. So I thought that they, um, that is like a, like a cool, like end kind of to the story or like a, a small addition to it. Um, they haven't changed, they haven't added some code yet. They, they added it to the milestone for, you know, the, the, the next release or something. Uh, should I comment on it again? I, I I don't know because I don't feel like they necessarily need. Yeah, I don't know. Whatever. It's their decision. They are the developers. Um, in the end, you know what matters to us is we used it as a great example for CodeQL, right? In the end, it was not a crazy bug, but that's how bug hunting or research works. You know, uh, not everything is like crazy bug or something, but still a useful example. And now we come to kind of like the main purpose, um, uh, what, what I want to get into next. And that is 
using yearn. I want to replicate what we did with CodeQL using yearn. I have not used